Okay, we have an alternating series. We can tell it's an alternating series because we have negative n to some power. It could be to the power of n, to the power of n plus 1, whatever. It's going to be an alternating series. Uh, so naturally, to find out if this converges or diverges, we're going to use an alternating series test. The alternating series test tells us it has two stages. It has two stages, and by the end, if it passes them, it'll tell us that it converges. If it doesn't pass them, then it's inconclusive. It could still either diverge or converge. So you would have to use other tests. So what are these two tests? The first one is that b sub n plus 1 has to be less than or equal to b sub n. So in other words, it's monotonically decreasing. Uh, so what is b sub n? b sub n is just the part here which doesn't contain uh, the alternating little part. So that's what b sub n is. So in order to prove this, in order to test this, we can either plug in n plus 1 for all n's and see if that's less than or equal to b sub n, or we could differentiate. And if your derivative is negative, then that's also showing this. It's showing that it's monotonically decreasing. The second thing uh, to find out if it converges is to take the limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n and have that equal 0. So now let's go ahead and uh, do our first part, our first trial. So this, uh, you could either plug in n plus 1 or you could differentiate. I'm going to differentiate. So if we differentiate a quotient, we have to use the quotient rule. So this would be the derivative of the top uh, times the bottom unchanged minus the top unchanged and the derivative of the bottom, which is 3n squared. And then the bottom is just squared. We would have, and this is uh, the derivative of b sub n, this would be 2n to the 4 plus 8n minus 3n to the 4, which would give us uh, negative n to the 4 plus 8n. In that numerator, then we would have n cubed plus 4 squared. In the denominator, we could factor out an n, that would give us negative n cubed plus 8, with an n factored out. So now what would happen uh, with the series? Is this negative or not? Is, is the derivative negative or not? Well, remember that with the series, we're plugging in uh, values from 1 to infinity. And what we really care about is the behavior of infinity. So we could have the first few terms not be negative, and as long as the larger portion of infinity is still, um, its derivative is still negative, then we're good. It's still negative. And so it passes the first trial. Uh, because infinity can swallow, you know, a finite amount of positive terms uh, for your derivative. So remember, what we're looking at here is our derivative, and we want our derivative to be negative in order to show that this is decreasing. In order to show that this is decreasing. In other words, that this is true. So what would happen here? If we plug in 1, we would get negative 1 plus 8. That would actually be positive. But we can't stop so soon because if we plug in 2, now we're at 0 because we plug in 2 into here, and then that would give us 8, negative 8, plus 8, that would be 0. And then for every number after that, we would have a negative because we plug in 3, now we have negative 27, that's definitely negative, and any number larger than 3 is obviously going to give us even a larger negative, and therefore this would become negative for all eternity.
for the rest of infinity. So that means that our derivative is negative. It's just not negative for our first two terms because we start at 1. And 1 wouldn't give you a negative. 2 wouldn't give you a negative. But for all terms after that, you would get a negative. So yeah, I mean, since we're talking about infinity here, for all intents and purposes, this is a, a negative derivative. Uh, so, so let's uh, go on to the next stage. The next stage, we've passed that condition. The next stage is to take the limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n and have that equal 0. So limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over n cubed plus 4. We can divide by the term with the greatest power. So this would be n squared over n cubed. And we would have n cubed over n cubed plus 4 over n cubed. We're taking the limit as n approaches infinity. So this would have 1 over n. This would just be 1. And that would be 4 over n cubed. We plug in infinity. This goes to 0 because we're dividing 1 by an infinite amount. So it's 0. 4 divided by infinity is also 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. But 0 divided by anything is 0. So this is 0. So it passes our second test also, which means that this converges. This converges.